Welcome to First Baptist Baptist Church of St. Mary's, Georgia, Sunday School Time. Our pastor is Pastor Gary Otani, your teacher is Dr. Vivian Mitchell. Our unit two theme is inclusive love. Our subtopic today is the most excellent way. Our print passage is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Our lesson aims. Define Paul's understanding of love as the aspect of the spirit-led life. More excellent way. Appreciate love as motivation to share their God-given gifts. Act in love when sharing their God-given gifts. Why this lesson matters. Special gifts such as knowledge and wisdom can easily make us lose sight of our obligation to others. How can we avoid being pleased with ourselves? Paul suggested that love is the best way to relate to others and forget one's own status. Now we will begin reading the introduction for today's lesson. Love has been the theme of numerous songs, poems, fictions, and nonfiction compositions, plays, and movies. Irrespective of our social economic status, race, or ethnicity, love is a valued virtue. The term love is broadly used to describe a strong emotional feeling towards someone or something. Various definitions of love have been applied to these different relationships. Four specific kinds of love are found in the ancient Greek language, agape, phileo, storage, and eros. Eros is the kind of love that is based on physical attraction developed in romantic relationships. It is the type of love God intended to be preserved between a couple essential for a healthy marriage. Philos or phalo refers to loving others like a brother or sister. The kind of love in scripture is most often associated with Christians and is based on shared experiences. Both eros and philos can sour causing relationships to deteriorate or end because of their focus on self and self-fulfillment. The Greek word storage is considered familiar love and refers to natural and instinctual affection such as love of a parent towards an offspring and vice versa. The highest of the four words for love is agape, which represents God's divine love towards his son, humankind, and believers. All believers are commanded to demonstrate this kind of love in their personal relationship with others. Agape is not determined by our feelings and is expected to be shown to our enemies and persecutors. It is especially crucial for believers to show the world the agape form of love among themselves as a positive witness as Christ's representative. Our scripture reference is John chapter 13, verses 35. The church in Corinth needed to be reminded of this truth as they disrupted their unity and witness. They were specifically consumed with spiritual gifts and were literally at odds among themselves as to which gift was the most important. Paul addressed this issue in 1 Corinthians 13 and taught without display of agape, their gifts were meaningless and ineffective. Now we will begin reading the scriptures for today's lesson. The first section is titled The Necessity of Love, 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 through 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to the burn and have not charity, it profited me nothing. The next section is titled The Character of Love, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. Charity suffers long and is kind, charity envies not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, it, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believe all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. The next section is titled The Primacy of Love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 13. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. 
For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also am known. And now abide faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Now we will begin to discuss the scriptures. But first, I want to give you insight on the scriptures for today. First Corinthians 13 must be seen as an integral part of Paul's teaching about spiritual gifts. It has been called the hymn of love and identified as his greatest literary passage. However, Paul was still addressing the problems existing within this church in this chapter, specifically the divisiveness that had arisen over the use of spiritual gifts. God gave spiritual gifts for the purpose of edifying believers because they are spiritually endowed. The only way they can be properly operate is, is through those who are spiritual, that is, walking in the spirit. The Corinthians were failing to walk in the spirit and were manifesting sins of the flesh that hindered the purpose and effectiveness of the gifts they had been supernaturally given. They were more carnal than spiritual. 1 Corinthians 3 and 1 is the scripture reference. And were behaving like immature children. They were envious, jealous, arrogant, and blind to the key spiritual virtue of love. A congregation can be doctrinally sound and have multiple spiritual resources and not be motivated to minister by love. This is why developing spirituality is so critical to the mission of the church. Possessing spiritual gifts does not mean that spiritual fruit will be produced. There must be continuous growth in love for God and his people if sharing spiritual gifts as an act of love is to become reality. The first section is the necessity of love, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3. The church in Corinth did not understand the doctrine of spiritual gifts is essential for the health and effectiveness of the Lord's church and allowed the issues of spiritual gifts to become the source of division among them. After addressing several other problems challenging this congregation, Paul devoted a lengthy discussion and instruction to this controversial issue in 1 Corinthians verses 12 through 14. In chapter 13, it bridges the gap between his instructions about them. And in chapter 12, it talked about how they are to be used. In chapter 14, he explains what the attitudes and motives for using spiritual gifts are to be agape love. He employs hyperbole or extreme exaggeration and hypothetically refers to himself as being the most eloquent of speakers in verse 1. Paul says that if he posed the ability to eloquently express speech of any kind without practicing love, it would be like noisy noise produced by a gong symbol. In verse 2, Paul's transition from language to prophecy, knowledge and faith, prophecy identified as the greatest gift in chapter 14 is ineffective if it is not ministered in love. Likewise, the possession of all existing knowledge gained through personal effort or that comes through divine revelation and great faith have no value without love. Paul concludes the discussion of the necessity of love with the examples of these of mercy and extreme self-sacrifice. In verse 3, his message is clear giving all the one's possession as the supreme act of benevolence of submitting to be burned alive means nothing without love. The practical points for necessity of love is one, love is an essential ingredient in all Christian service. Two, all of our gifts, our talents are meaningless if they are not used with love. And three, any good that we do is worthless if it is not done in love. The next section is titled The Character of Love, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. In the previous verses, Paul asserts that the greatest of gifts are valueless without love. He provides a description of the qualities of love in verses 4 through 7. In verses 4 through 5, Paul explains nine qualities and actions of love. Each of these qualities is the opposite of the attitude and behavior of the Corinth use of spiritual gifts. Paul says that when love is present, there is patience, kindness, and the absence of envy towards others. 
Those whose lives are grounded in love find no satisfaction and unrighteousness, but rejoice in God's truth in verse six. In verse seven, Paul concludes this section by presenting four positive actions of love. He explains that loving Christians they bear all things, they believe all things, and they hope all things, and they endure all things. So the practical point for the character of love is one, Christian love is always directed towards others. And two, Christian love looks for the best in others and gives the best it has. The next section, the permanency of love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 13. In the final section of this chapter, Paul proves that love is the greatest gift because it is permanent. Its permanency is established because it is from God and of God. Because he is eternal, so is love. Paul explains that love never fails, but the gift the Corinthians prize most definitely would. Prophecy, languages, and knowledge. There are some things that God has not chosen to reveal. So prophecy too is only partial in verse nine. In verse 10 and 12, Paul concludes by explaining that what we know is partial or vague, like an imperfect reflection in a mirror. Our knowledge is still childlike, but love will lead us in the end to the day when the veil is drawn aside and we will see face to face even as we are known, love is absolutely supreme and lasting. Faith and hope are great, but love is greater because God is love and he is eternal. The practical point for the primacy of love is love will continue when everything else we know has passed away. Two, we may understand better than we once did, but we do not see all there is now. And three, we can be certain of one thing, love is eternal. A closing thought, what characterizes the environment of our congregation, the ministry of love or church activity? Love is the basic ingredient in Christian character, but as it was in Corinth, it is often the missing virtue. Diversity of spiritual gifts and right biblical doctrine can be present, but these are not substitutes for agape love. There is a need to self-reflect and return to our first love, Revelation 2 and 4, because God expects that everything we do be done in love to include the use of spiritual gifts. Because of our salvation, we do not have to manufacture love. We only need to share the love of God. We have been given through the Holy Spirit in our lives and allow him to transform us daily into the image of Jesus Christ. Life application. Spiritual gifts are given to every believer who accepts Jesus Christ by faith. These gifts are given to edify or build up the church for the purpose of partnering with God and his mission in the world. If you have not done so, discover your unique spiritual gift or gifts and allow it or them to be used in a spirit of love for God's predetermined purpose for your life. A closing prayer that I would like to read is dear God, forgive us for often missing the mark in demonstrating love in our relationship with one another. Help us to love genuinely and inclusively as we share the spiritual gifts you have sovereignly and graciously given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I wanna take a few moments and just reflect because we know that this month is Domestic Violence Month. We also know that this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And if you are dealing with it or one of the issues or you have done, dealt with it, I want to encourage you today to always remember that if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he has the perfect gift and that is his love. And as we've studied through the Sunday school lesson today, it is important for us to understand that we must give our lives to God because whatever we go through in life, he will never leave us nor forsake us. One thing that I am blessed about, and it is important to be around individuals who love God, who, who will pray for you, who have the best interest and heart for you so that you will follow God's will for your life. I thank God for my church family, First African Baptist Church in St. Mary's, Georgia. I was blessed with a little 
promise. And it says from God for women. And then on the other side, it says promises 101 blessings to brighten your day and uplift your soul. And so if I feel down and out, I use this to encourage me. So it's important to use the word. It has the scriptures on one side, then it has an encouraging thought on one. And so I just want to read several to you. And it one says hope in the Lord, Psalms 137. So no matter what we're going through, I want you to have hope in the Lord. And on the other side, it says being a praying woman does not mean that you'll never have bad days. It means you are willing to find beauty even in the ugliest days. And then another one that I wanted to read to you is love never fails. And that is 1 Corinthians 13 and 8. And on the other side, it says the best way to spend my day is to spend it with you. And so that's like God is speaking to me. And so I just wanted to encourage you today with those two positive blessings from God and to understand that God loves us and his love would never fail. So may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15 and 13. I want to encourage you today as Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so I encourage you today that if you do not know Jesus in the midst of your sins, that you will receive him as your Lord and Savior and allow him to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in you so that you can do what God's will is for your life. And I encourage you that if you have any questions, if you want someone to pray for you, that our email address is here. Um, also, if you want to talk to someone on the phone, our phone number is listed. Always remember to never stop praying, especially for others. God bless you and have a wonderful